Good. Hey, Pascal. Good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Um, so, Pascal, I laid out a bunch of questions for you um, early mm -hmm. about what we'd like to talk about. Um, not sure if you have any new information. So, helpful right now if I go down the list of questions. Um, if folks have other questions, please put them in the chat. Roz will find them and either read them off or call on you um, to ask your own question. We only have Pascal for like the first half hour. I see Matt from the city of Cambridge. Hello, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so we'll try to get out as much as we can and go from there. So friends, uh, for those of you that were on the Boston call, some of this may be redundant. Hopefully we'll learn something new or we'll reinforce the stuff that we um, already knew. Because um, that is what life is in 2020. Um, hey, Pascal. <laughs> what phase of the governor's reopening plan is Boston in? We are in step one of phase three, which means that only outdoor theater and performance venues and indoor movie theaters may reopen. Um, it means that indoor theaters and performance venues within the city of Boston may open for activities without a live audience. So if you want to do rehearsals in a space, if you want to live stream a performance um, or use a space to have a class, you're welcome to do that as long as there is no live audience, but you still must adhere to the same guidelines and protocols of six feet distance between people, masks should be worn. Um, there is a whole checklist and I'm going to actually put the link in the um, chat to the guidelines specifically for theaters and performances. They really haven't changed much. It's really for um, indoor movie theaters that has been lifted or adjusted. Great. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so then, um, in terms of, you're putting the guidelines there, can you give us sort of broad strokes, uh, general guidelines for, again, performing arts venues and, organiza and organizations as we're trying to yeah. do stuff? Like, what's the big ticket items? Yes. Um, so I think the big ticket items is we're still saying we are still encouraging and requiring people to continue social distancing of at least six feet. Um, if uh, if there is singing or any music involved that can only happen outdoors and with at least 10 feet in between the instrument or the person involved, there is no singing happening indoors whatsoever. We are not encouraging that at all. I know there has been um, some conversations of some institutions that may be doing that. We are not encouraging that and there is no guidance for those um, for for those institutions that will say um, and I know a lot of them are doing it on their own volition and on their own um, uh, their own checklist of things. Um, so that does not mean that that is safe and that, that the city is encouraging or co-signing it. Um, but we are not encouraging any kind of singing with indoors, even outdoors. It is very, we are discouraging it. But if it is, if it's something that is happening, you know, one example is like uh, the Starlight Square, we are encouraging at least 10 feet between the singer and the uh, instrumentalist, and at least 25 feet between the singer and any audience that may be in the vicinity. And just a reminder, that is an outdoor space. Yes, only outdoors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, we have a bunch of questions already in the chat. So actually, uh, Roz. Can I ask you to get in on some of those if you yeah. would? Thanks. Sorry, I froze up. My internet froze up for a second there. Sorry. Um, we have a question um, from Katherine Peterson about singing inside a church or a recording studio. So for a church, we don't have specific guidelines for singing in a church, but I would, I know that this is happening in certain areas, but we are again discouraging any kind of singing inside. There should be no singing happening inside any kind of space, even if they have a great HVAC system, we are still discouraging this kind of activity. Um, in terms of recording studios, I believe that is on the recording studio to, def to figure out their own guidelines because they have the ability to create any um, um, partitions or things like that. But again, if the, if a singing inside should not be happening at all, I do not know of any recording studios that are doing that, unless if they are doing voice acting, but I know a lot of that's happening in people's houses and not at recording studios. And is that uh, in the chat, there's a question, uh, just to follow up, is there's a difference between discouraging versus it being illegal? Can you explain that nuance? 
Sure. The, I guess the thing is that there, we're not like sending a squad of people to check in on performances and arrest you if you are, if you're singing, right? Um, and there's no way for us to come in and commandeer your space and tell you, you can't sing. But the reason we are just, we say discourage and we can't say illegal because there's no law that, um, that is set that we can, in, that we can impose to people. But the, uh, but the hope is by the thing is singing does spread the virus more than any other kind of activity. And so we are discouraging that to just to um, create a less opportunity for spreading in indoors as we know it's more likely for the virus to spread inside than outside. Hence why we are extreme discouraging and prohibiting people from singing indoors. So it's not a matter of uh, uh, you will be charged any kind of uh, crime or or have to be closed. But we but this is how we are hoping that people can continue a safe um, way of coming back and figuring out how we move forward in this time. Cool. And one one more uh, follow up. Um, the which phase is indoor theater with an audience. Um, I believe the hope is that it will be in the next step, but th but that can change. I think what um what I what I think is encouraging for everyone to know is as we move through the virus, the steps and phases will change. Um, that, that's why now even even though the state has moved into a different phase, we are still in uh, step one, phase three, because of the uh, because of the amount of uptake of virus um, confirmation that we're receiving in the state and we are still in a red zone. Um, so that is that also informs it. Um, but I think the other thing uh, that's important to know about any kind of indoor thing that may happen is we're hopeful that as we continue to discourage people from doing these things, we can come back a little bit sooner, um, or at least have more of an opportunity to come back maybe in a smaller scale. But we do not have a clear indication as to when that will happen. Um, but I think there, the opportunity to bring people inside live stream and is, a, is a step we're hopeful that can continue. But again, we all have to be very mindful of how, that, how the social distancing is going on so that we can keep moving in the steps. Great, thank you, Pascal. Um, so I think uh, I, you've been talking a lot about this, but just for me, peace of mind, the types of events that are permitted indoors versus the types of events that are permitted outdoors. Can you just real quick one more time? Sure, indoors, no live audience. That's the biggest thing. There should be no live audience, no one entering the building that isn't up either the performer or someone who is facilitating whatever the the event or thing that you are live streaming or rehearsing in. Um, and it's still, the gathering number is still, um, I believe it's 10, let me just look it up, I put it in the chat. But the group sizes are no more than 10 people and it's 25 people per 1,000 square feet. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're still, key, the guidelines are, have really not changed. The only thing that has changed is that people are now able to live stream in their spaces if they'd like to, to an audience virtually. Um, and if they want to have rehearsals, that's still, that is fine. But again, you have to be masked six feet, distance, no touching whatsoever. Great. Um, and then, sorry, I'm just looking, right, there's a question in the chat that's, what about singing with singers masked? And so if I, right, let me take a crack at this, right, given what you have said, right, the city of Boston is not, um, is not recommending singing. That said, right. you're not going into any place cracking down on it. So, right, right you shouldn't, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Basically, you shouldn't. yes. We, you, should. you just shouldn't. Um, you should. And I know, and I know that's a hard thing to to reconcile with in this time. But mm -hmm. again, singing is a it's a super spreading activity, and there is no real way, especially indoors, to limit the spread. Even if you have an amazing HVAC system that's able to move the air as much as possible, mm -hmm. there's still an opportunity opportunity for a possible uh, a possible instance of, of spreading the, the virus. So that's just something we're going to keep having until um, 
uh, until we are moving away from this moment, which I hope can be in the future. Um, and I did want to clarify because I saw in the note, I saw in the uh, chat, um, I did make a, a, a mistake. It's for venues with, uh, so in terms of permitting occupancy, this, the limitation is still eight persons, eight persons per 1,000 square feet. Um, so no more than 50 people ever in that entire space but per 1,000 square feet. So again, these guidelines are haven't really changed much outside of movie theaters are really where these guidelines have changed. They are allowed to open with 50% capacity in, in difference between theaters. So that's the big change is really movie theaters. Great. Okay, so I wanna ask a question about occupancy, but Roz, um, I see a couple of other people have some things in the chat. So as soon as we get this question out, would you take a check in with that? So my question about occupancy, one of the things that um, you all talked about on the call was, right, um, how many people can be in a space, but what, um, in terms of uh, staff performers um, or just audience, right? Different for indoors versus outdoors. If outdoors, we can have audience. So can you talk a little bit about what the numbers are and how staff and performers are counted uh, both indoors and outdoors? Sure. Um, oh, sorry. So for indoors, and just we have it all marked off here. This is outdoors. So for outdoor venues, um, so you still have to, we're also still asking people to monitor customers entering and exiting and limiting the capacity of 25% of the venues maximum uh, permitted occupancy as documented and it's occupancy permit on record. Um, so no more than 50 people. Venues for which the for which they are not permitted occupancy limitation is on record to have eight persons per per 1000 square feet. And that does include the customers, the patrons, the attendees, the workers and staff. So that does include that entire um, thing, to, uh, that entire scope of people. So that is for outdoors. For indoors, it is the same as well. So again, nothing really has changed drastically from that. Great. Um, Roz, can you take it to the chat? Yes. Uh, just to just to recap, um, in terms of masks during rehearsals versus during a performance, um, Lindsay, also, if you want to um, expand on that question specifically, as well as social distancing during, is social distancing required for dance? Hey, yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I guess my question is if, I'm sorry that we're late, um, but if there's a rehearsal happening indoors, uh, say in like the black box or whatever at BCA and you're six feet apart and whatever, do you, or say it's a recording of a live stream, do you have to keep your mask on? Are artists expected to keep their masks on during the performance part of the... I, so, yeah, good question. Um, I think, especially when it's indoors, we are encouraging people to keep their mask on as much as possible and having as much distance. Now, if you don't have as many people in the room, if it's one person and they're at socially distanced from a camera, like at, a, like maybe 20 feet away, that, I, that is fine. But again, if there's a lot of people in that room, everyone should be socially distanced and kept their, and their mask should be kept on, especially inside. Outside, there can be some leeway because again, we, we encourage more outside performances than indoor, indoors at this moment. So inside masks should be kept on at all times. Outside, again, we're still encouraging six feet distance. If there is singing involved, 10 feet distance outdoors if that makes sense. Great, because what I feel like I'm seeing in film industry is that they're encouraging artists to keep their masks on until the active filming starts and their mask comes off. And then when the filming stops, they put their mask back on. Um, so that, that seems reasonable. My other question is about dance and mm -hmm. social distancing requirements for dance. I don't know if that's been asked already, but we have a lot of dance that happens at BCA and I just want some clarification on like what the expectations are. We're encouraging nobody to touch anyone. There should be no touching of any other bodies, um, especially indoors. So I think that's that's the biggest issue. That's the that's what we're encouraging and discouraging people from touching and no contact against keeping six feet at least between people. Great, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Katie Most. Uh, if we're screening a film we can have 50% capacity as long as folks are six feet apart. Is that correct? Indoors, I'm assuming that's indoors. Yes. 
I believe so. Again, I so I put in the chat, uh, I think it's a little bit up there. I put in the chat the checklist um, that we are all encouraging. If anyone is thinking of any kind of event, please use that checklist to, to make sure that your event or whatever you are doing is adhering to the guidelines that we are in at this moment. Um, so if it's indoors, six feet apart, 50 50% capacity, masks should be wearing, there should be partitions for people when they're coming in, timed entry, all of these protocols that are in that checklist, um, that's what you should use to make sure that your event or whatever you are have their screening, I should say, is adhering to the guidelines at this moment. Great. And uh, Deborah's question, Deborah Weiss's question, um, is kind of about a follow-up on the mask question. Um, if there are an instance of the cast is quarantined or pod together, um, or if there's a lot of, like if there's consistent testing, is there an exception for mask wearing? And Deborah, if you wanna also clarify anything there. I, I think that the question actually has been answered for um, Boston. I think I understand, uh, I asked that question before um, Lindsay got on, so, um, right. We'll wait and hear what our Cambridge uh, rep says. Great. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm uh, trying to be mindful of Pascal's time. It looks like we actually got a bunch of our questions out. And my last two questions, I think, um, are covered in everything that was said. Yes. Right. Um, so, Pascal, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, thanks for dropping that link again yes. um, and for all of this information. And I am sure we will see you in the not too distant future. You'll <laughs> see me Friday be here at the meeting. A if you we'll come see on you Friday. Over. Yes. Bye, Pascal. Bye bye. Thank thanks, you all Pascal. so much. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye. All right, next up, City of Cambridge. Matthew, if you would unmute yourself, give us all a wave. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I mean, I think you can see from the questions in the chat, I, I'm fairly certain we are all going to have the same sort of questions. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same, the same show and song and dance and y'all know what to do, put your questions in the chat. Um, Hey, Matthew, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, what phase of the governor's reopening plan is Cambridge in? So uh, we are similar to Boston for most of our um, industries. We're in uh, phase 3.1 for the most part. We have not opened up our indoor performance venues. We have one outdoor perform performance venue that's been mentioned already in Starlight. I, I would like to say that um, I, I am not nearly as informed on all of Cambridge regulations as Pascal is. I do a lot more work with our restaurant community than our arts community. So if any question I can't answer, I'm happy to bring back the answer to the group as soon as possible. But we are uh, currently uh, moving slow um, as similar to other cities sur surrounding us. Um, so then, I, is it, would you have an answer about, let's say, general guidelines for performing arts venues? Um, are venues, indoor venues, in a place where they can do things like rehearsal or live streaming, or are they closed 100%? So I'm pretty sure they're closed, but I, I would actually even, I see some of my partner friends on the call, I would even call on Catherine or Peter to, um, to, to, to chime in, I, you know, I know the dance complex is open um, for in Central Square for classes and things like that. I don't know what they're doing at Central Square Theater, um, but if I, if I got that wrong, uh, maybe they can chime in. Uh, uh, no, we're, yeah, we're, we're been open since July 15th yeah. with uh, uh, just to, and, and going by the guidelines then, right. which I still think are okay that yep. we are, 10 to 12 feet apart, masked at every point, unless dancers are, uh, are living together uh, in relationship, potting together. Uh, but we discourage it even then, just because there should be a mask, in my mind, at, at any time you're in with other people. So, and no congregating. Uh, you come 10 minutes before your class, you sign up before, there's a pass system. 
so we can uh, trace folks and uh, and um, it's <laughs> warm up, dance, get out, <laughs> and do so fully. Yeah, yeah. I I, I didn't mean to. I, I got a little confused there, but so they've been going since those guidelines came out in the summer. Um, <laughs> And, and in terms of the outdoor guidelines, we are following the state's guidelines for 3-1. So no more than 50 people and 10 feet, 25 feet, similar to Boston. Mm -hmm. um, for outdoors, do you think that will change at all? Will the... So, so I don't know, for folks who are in the, who've seen what we've put out recently, we, we've been moving really cautious on a lot of these um, orders that have come from the state. Our schools aren't aren't in person yet, and they're scheduled to be coming back next week um, in a rolling basis. And so, we're that's our priority right now is to see what happens with the, when the schools do go back in person as we start to think about moving into forward phases in other industries. Um, so, you know, when we put out our our release about not moving into three two and our our strengthening our mask order. Um, we, we, we did mention that with, this is all in line with trying to see how, how things uh, roll out with our, our in-person school when, when that does happen. Um, so can you... So, no, so to answer the, so to be a little more specific to answer the question, we don't really know. Um, we're, we're evaluating as we go. Okay. Um, in terms of strengthening uh, your mask order, what does that mean for folks, for, for performers or people in, in the city of Cambridge? Yeah, yeah, there, there really isn't any time when you should have your mask off um, in Cambridge, um, we, outside or inside. So um, our, our, we, during the summer months, we aligned with the state where you could take your mask off outside um, if you could physically distance so that is no longer part of our order you have to have it on at all times unless um, medically not possible and, and, and inside as well if um, if you're in a residential building with two or more units in any common area as well as any business or office unless you can be by yourself in a closed office mm -hmm. you have to have a mask on okay Kathy I see you went off uh, you opened up your mic what Sure. I was just going to say that we have a pretty rigorous, uh, for theater, we're not open in our indoor space, mainly because of the distancing rules and the union. They just make it not, not possible now. Uh, and some of the things that we need to do, uh, capital changes we need to make. Uh, in terms of Starlight, they're pretty rigorous. Uh, we follow pretty rigorous um, compliance rules. So all of our performers are tested. In advance, uh, masks are worn, temperatures are taken, uh, masks only come off to perform um, once you are distanced, uh, ten, six, 10, and 25 feet. So it's, and still only 50 people. Matt, you could put in a good word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I would love, I mean, you know, knock on wood. We've been very successful mm -hmm. with, uh, with rigorous protocols, so. Um, so Matt, can you talk a little bit, I, I have two questions, right? We all know about Starlight, but do we know of any other outdoor spaces that may become available in Cambridge? And then what types of events are permitted outdoors since indoors is sort of mostly closed with the exception of like, like some of the stuff that like Peter's doing at the dance complex? Yeah, so I'm actually just gonna drop a link in in the chat for our latest update on we love a link on um, our, our events um, we've been we've been updating this almost monthly uh, but we are not at this time permitting any public or private events um, starlight is a, is a specific example they have a license agreement with the city mm -hmm. um, Anything else basically that needs a street closure or an event permit or a license um, has so, has been, um, we just announced that we're no, not accepting events through the middle of October. We, we picked that date because we're still also um, evaluating Halloween. Um, so we, we, we would have normally gone through the end of the month 
but we're trying to figure out what if there's anything we can do with Halloween. Um, I don't think there's much, but we didn't want to we didn't want to upset everyone just yet on the Halloween. Um, there was one other uh, sort of special um, project that happened uh, for three Thursdays in Inman Square in Cambridge. Um, the Lily Pad worked with a business association to do three Thursdays of music. And it was behind a, a closed gate in a bank parking lot. Um, and so there was, there was no room for gathering. Um, it was more just live music that, that was background music um, while people ate outside and um, at the outdoor dining in the square. So um, potentially there's opportunities for one-offs like that. It was a really special situation because the gate locked um, the musicians were able to distance in the parking lot and not have any um, anyone near them and there wasn't any space for gathering or attendees to, to kind of linger around. Um, but other than that, it's basically just been starlight um, and some random pop-ups in the squares that aren't permitted. <laughs> Um, which, I, so, which I'm not going to lie, it, 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 it's, they sound good. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some normalcy. <laughs> Some normalcy. Well, so for this event that happened in Inman Square, um, right, you, you've just said that the city of Cambridge will not be permitting anything necessarily like that until the middle of October. But did the lily pad come to you with a proposal already in mind? Like how, yeah. how does somebody go about getting that done? Yeah, so that was worked through the Business Association. The lily pad went through the East Cambridge Business Association, which represents Inman Square. Mm -hmm. And um, we ran it through our public health director um, and the city manager to, to gain approval. Um, it was, um, it, and, it, and it was also um, that there was, there's normal, normally this happens every year and there's grant funds associated with it for the mm -hmm. artists. And um, the grants needed approval from our finance director, which also sort of triggered a, an, appro an approval process. Can you talk a little bit about the timeline for that? I mean, as Kathy said, and many of us know, we also, depending on the types of artists we're trying to engage, right, we also have to go through a union. Um, and like the time frame for that is anywhere from, well, it takes forever. So what, what how long does this process take? I think, I think it might have a little bit of a different uh, speed, um, partly because of the, the, the size of government here in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I, people call me, I'm directly connected to the city manager and um, you know, with these one-offs can be done um, in a little bit of a quicker time timeline. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that for the most part, we're, our answer has been consistently no. Um, this was a unique opportunity um, to, uh, engage a business district, some musicians, um, a nonprofit all in one. Um, but for the most part, we've been really, really cautious just about every step we've taken. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this seemed to kind of hit a thread that we hadn't gotten yet. And maybe yeah. there's more like that. Mm -hmm. um, happy to, I'm always happy to take it to my superiors and get shot down if, if, if need be. Mm -hmm. um, and for their proposal, did they talk about things like safety, social distancing, contract tracing? Like, had they laid everything out and really just had to sort of? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty, or it was a little bit of an organic situation um, that they had a plan for how to keep mm -hmm. people from gathering. Um, the musicians were connected with the lily pad where um, it, was, it was only uh, three or four people each mm -hmm. night. So it was a small amount and they were all distant um, mm -hmm. Great. And then in terms of the performers and Kathy and Peter, I ask if you have any information on this, jump in please. Um, but in, in regards to social distancing with performers in these spaces, um, what are the numbers that we're looking at? Is it still right like six feet apart, 10 feet apart? Um, what should we be thinking? It still is. It still is all those things. And plus, yeah, Josh things. is on the line too with uh, improv. Oh, Boston, hey, Josh. And they've been they've Sorry, been I'm performing. Fine. Yeah, they're a partner too. Um, I guess I, I wanted to ask a question. And Matt, I don't know if you know the answer or not. But what are the that? So at what what has to be met before? Because Cambridge is unlike Boston. Cambridge's numbers are pretty good in terms of lessening, stopping the spread of the virus. So 
whereas Boston's a little bit worse. Um, what are the, like, where do we need to be as a city before we feel like we can jump on and get more capacity for Starlight, open up, do, um, be able to do more things, more permanent things? We, we get that question a lot. And, and um, you know, it, it's, there is, I don't, so far we don't have a specific answer. We, the city manager is fine, you know, mentioned it a look at one of our city council meetings last week on COVID, a COVID update that, you know, he, he, he has an, um, an advisory panel, a public health advisory panel. He's got his public health director and, and um, the Cambridge Health Alliance. And he's taking all of that information, but fi you know, the final decision does stop with him. Um, one of the issues we have, uh, our rate is one of the best rates of infection in the country. Um, but you know, if we were to open up, our borders don't close. So um, if we were to open up things, it would. We, one of our concerns is people would a lot more people from other uh, cities and towns would come to Cambridge, not necessarily from an infection rate as good as ours. So it's it's a balancing act in terms of um, you know causing uh, larger gatherings of people mixing up from other cities and towns. Um, so it's not just about where Cambridge's rate is; it's 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 also our surrounding communities. Um, and then uh, it's it it's Event, oh, finally, as I mentioned, it's a decision the city manager makes. There's, there hasn't necessarily been specific metrics we've wanted to hit in our city or in the region. It's, it's, um, it's moving forward slowly and cautiously. And I think he's been happy with keeping the way we've been able to keep rates low. So this, I don't think the strategy is going to change. Um, thank you. I also, Kathy, had a question on the colleges, if they've had any effect on Cambridge's rates, which are pretty low. Can you speak to that? Um, yeah, so the, 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 uh, the rates that we've gotten, they, they've continued to stay low. Um, the effect they've had is we've, we've been able to just stay with their testing. We've been able to test a lot more people. Um, Harvard and MIT especially are, are doing a lot of tests and Cambridge is, is also has their own testing program. We have our, our, our pop-up tests twice a week. Um, we've tested around 11,000 uh, tests so far um, in addition. So the, 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 they've just, what they've done is they've added to the amount of tests, but our positivity rate continues to be really low. Okay. Um, for anybody, for any of our members that are in Cambridge, if they are interested in working with any of the business associations to do something sort of like what happened at Inman, who should they be in touch with? Um, so yeah, I mean, so I, I'm happy to connect them. I, great. like I said, when when I can leave my email in the chat. That'd be great. Um, when, uh, I, most of my work is a lot is around small businesses and retail and restaurants, um, with the city manager. But I also sit on our arts, uh, reopening advisory committee with Jason Weeks. Um, and w you know, I think as this moves forward and we continue to slowly, get back to normal sometime. Soon, I hope the arts and the business sector sh should be even more connected, um, especially as we start to plan our, our streets and activate our communities. Um, even if we start to, as we begin to plan for next spring and next summer. Um, so um, I see even more connections as we start to become a safer place to activate. Great. Um, and then a uh, question for any of the folks involved um, in Starlight. Um, this space is extending its run, is that correct? Is that a thing that we can talk about at all? No, not it's official perfect. yet, right, not Matt? Official. <laughs> not we, official quite yet. We, we are- Make uh, it official. <laughs> we, are, we are moving in a very positive direction. Um, and we have another meeting, the city, you know, the city, um, the city, you know, did a lot to make this parking lot available, but the business improvement district and the partners have done the, the, the army of the, the work and it's just been amazing to see. Um, and, and the city manager has said that he doesn't want to see it go away. Um, there, are, there are obviously other factors involved, be it um, weather and um, planning for the winter and also what our partners want to do um, with the space. So it's, um, it's something we, we hope we can keep going. Um, we have announced uh, 
which is a little bit different than Boston, actually, at least for our restaurants, we did align with the state where we're allowing our restaurants to stay outside until the end of the 60 days after the end of the state of emergency. Um, even in the winter, um, we're going around and working with our outdoor dining uh, establishments and uh, planning to put up Jersey barriers to protect them from snow plows. So we're really trying to work with our businesses and our nonprofits who want to be outside in the cold. Um, so hopefully that, that, that can still happen in starlight. Great. I just I wanted to just add, um, and this is uh, kind of the soft, softer value, but I think important to mention is that so many of the people who've been performing on Starlight, it's like their first time, you know, involved in, in a, a world that they, they've known differently, right? And, and some of the learning, I think, that's going on about what it means to perform 25 feet away from uh, people who are already, you know, 12 feet apart, where the feedback we're getting is this is... Um, uh, I remember back to the beginning of the, of the uh, you know, end of March and so people saying it's never going to be the same and, and, and we're, it's going to destroy theater, it's going to destroy dance. And I just think it's the opposite. It's just finding out difference in how to be with each other, how an audience and performers connect, how performers uh, for the dance world to, be, um, to become more dimensional in, in what they're producing, how they're performing, how they talk to each other. So it's been really inspirational to see that. And I, I noticed that with, with Improv Boston and Central Square Theater's productions as well. Um, so if there's, and, and it's making me think that I wanna go out and at, actually ask all the choreographers and dancers to write a little something, because if that information is helpful as the rest of the world starts to open up, maybe we can make a case to the well-being of audiences and the well-being of performers that is also about health, right? It's not just about staying 12 feet away and not communicating, it's about it's about um, you know the balance of mind body connection, even if it's spatially distanced. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, I'm going to jump in and just add something very briefly to Peter's thing. Uh, and Peter, that's all exactly true. I think the more constraints you have on something like that, it gives you a structure that you can build off of. It's it's a constraint isn't necessarily a problem. It's just a, a thing you have to work around. Uh, and I know for for my performers they have gotten so much out of it. it the, the, the ability to perform and, and make their art happen has been a super emotional journey. And those constraints of maintaining the distance and rehearsing in a new way and, and all the rest of it, uh, it doesn't take anything away. It, it just, you know, this is a new thing that we have to work around in the same way that, you know, there is that spot on the stage that can never get lit properly or, uh, you know, whatever it may be, uh, the benefits far outweigh the, the, the demerits of the constraint, so. Excellent. Um, thanks, friends. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat, and I think I have asked all the questions, Matt, that I had of you. Um, so friends, if that's it, uh, I'm gonna, let's call it. And we've got like 16, 17 minutes of found time. Woohoo for found time, all right? Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we will have our next meeting on the 20th. Um, hang on, let me just look at my calendar real quick, or can I? Can I, can I, on the 20th. Um, so we will talk to you all then. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt, for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, thanks, Starlight Crew, Kathy, Peter, Josh, for um, your extra insights. We really appreciate you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>